and I am a federal probation officer, so I work for the United States government for federal probation, all right? So what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is about the federal probation system, and I'm going to give you all some facts about it. Sit down, please. Thank you. All right, so today I'm going to tell you about the Western District of Kentucky and the U.S. Probation Office. So I'm going to give you two facts at the beginning. I'm going to ask you those facts at the end. And if you get those facts right, when you raise your hand, I'll give you some candy out of this bag beside me. All right? So I got everybody's attention now that I said candy. All right. So our office, our district, covers 53 counties in Kentucky. We're the Western District. So we cover from Elizabethtown all the way to Paducah, all the way to the Mississippi River. That's a big area, isn't it? So I cover, we have 27 officers that cover that area, and we're responsible for seeing all the people in those areas that are on federal supervision. Okay? Our agency was started in 1925. Got it? 1925. But we became at this system in 1940. Okay? So 1925 and 1940. So almost 100 years that we've been doing this. We almost got it right, but a few more years we'll have it right. But almost 100 years. That's a long time, isn't it? All right. So what? Uh, one function of our job is that we go see people at their houses. Okay? So that means I can come see you at your house. I can come see you at your work. I can come see you um, at school, um, in the drive-thru at Wendy's, all right? I can, hey, I can see you at a bunch of different places. But when I come out to see you, I can be wearing a couple different things. One of the things is you'll see us wearing is a ballistic vest, right? So that's this thing right here. So, for, so sometimes officers can come to your house and they're wearing this. We, anybody have any idea how much that might weigh? How much do you think it weighs? 15? You're exactly right. 15 to 16 pounds. That's a great job. 15 to 16 pounds that weighs. That's heavy, right? Then I wear this around my waist. We call it a duty belt because I wear it while I'm duty. Um, or a tool belt because it has the tools on it that I need to keep myself safe or to fin fix the job. All right. So what are some things on this belt that you might see me carrying? A firearm, correct. What else, sir? I don't get to carry tasers. My job doesn't allow me to carry tasers or batons. So no tasers or batons for Victor. All right, what else? Evidence tape is something I carry, but not on this belt. What else? Handcuffs, right? What's important to carry with handcuffs? A key, right? You don't want to carry handcuffs without a key. All right, then it's tough. What else can go on my belt? Yes, sir. An ammo, yep. Yes, ma'am. That flashlight right there? Yep, that's a clue, right? All right, uh, what else? A badge, right? I want to be able to identify myself when I'm coming to your house at 6 in the morning or at 10 at night. I want to be able to, you all know who I am, right? I just, Otherwise, it's kind of strange if somebody come in and knock at your door at 6 in the morning, right? Yeah, Amazon doesn't even come that early, do they? All right, What? so what else? What else is on this? I can't hear you. Okay, yep, yeah, that's correct, the firearm. What else? Right. What else? What goes in here, you think? It's some type of spray. Oh, pepper spray. Right, so pepper spray. Pepper spray sometimes, you know, our, our biggest problem when we go out to houses are dogs. Dog bites, so I carry treats, dog treats in this little pocket sometimes, or pepper spray if they don't like the treats, all right? Because sometimes we get bit. This happens, all right? So, I, so I'm here at your house, I got all my tools with me, I knock on the door, hey, it's Victor, I need to come in and see you. So then I walk through the house. I have to walk through the house, make sure you're following all the rules of your supervision, okay? So some of the rules of your supervision are you have to let me visit your house and that you can't have certain things. What are some of those things that you don't think you can have that, you think that I would get upset with if you had? Yes, ma'am. What else? Yep, can't have those. Those are bad. Can't have those, right? Right. So those are called violations. Okay? So violations are things that you can't have that I've seen that I have to take back, right? So I take them back. I use this tape, put them in a bag, seal it up, take it back to my office. We have an evidence room at my office. How big do you think it is? Do you think it's like a little closet or do you think it's like a big classroom? Yeah. Yes, sir. Small or big? Right. 
unfortunately it's, it's pretty large because we have to take a bunch of stuff. All right. make sure that the medicine stays in its original bottle because that's how you make sure that you're getting the medicine that was actually given to you and you know that it's safe, right? Yeah. What other questions do you guys have? Yeah. No? Any questions? Yeah. Why, why is there a bunch of like shot to you? So you guys can use those and practice on each other if you want, but I just wanted to demonstrate that pharmacists still give shots. We don't just do medicine, but that's a big, big part of what we do. So if you guys, you can sit down and do it and just pass them around, but we can practice giving shots on each other's arms. Um, my doctor told me that that was a bluey shot. My doctor gave my mom a ready amount of medicine. Oh, see a dentist but you also have a abscess does anybody know what a special root canal dentist is called an endodontist and with an endodontist they just specialize in root canals has anybody ever heard of a root canal do y'all know what a root canal is 
you let a, you know what a root canal is? If you let a filling go too long, you may need a root canal. So with a, you can break it down between dentistry, optometry, regular health. Each field has a specialty that you can advance on in. If you want to see a heart doctor, if you're having heart trouble, it's a cardiologist. But we also, that's just as important as one, is school nurses. Everybody loves our school nurse. Everybody, she's here to help people. Does she always make y'all feel better? No. no. Yes. Not all the way. But she does. She pat you over till you can get home. The pain over. Does she take the pain away till you can get home? Yeah. Give you some band aids, some Tylenol. Yes, you can have some crayons. Y'all can have crayons. Does anybody have any questions about anything in the healthcare facility? You can't yeah, take all of them. You can only take one. You can only take one. No. You don't have to get one if you don't want to. Yeah, if you don't want a crown, you don't have to get one. Don't on the table. Aiden and Lou. Don't on the table because it's too Will you give one to Victor? Never mind. Thank you. Well, they might put you on different kinds of medicines, and that's where different people in the healthcare world, that's where they have to work together. A doctor has to work with a pharmacist to make sure you get the correct medicine. A doctor may prescribe you a certain kind of medicine, but if you're on something else that will react to it, the pharmacist will oversee that and maybe have the doctor rewrite another prescription. So it takes all different jobs working together to make the healthcare field flow. But also, the most important thing is in healthcare, the healthcare world is always going to be around. It is a certain job and it is always you are always going to need a doctor or a nurse or a dentist. You're never not going to eventually need one in your life. And when you do, we're thankful that they're there. So if that's something you like and enjoy, you may want to consider doing that, especially if you have a heart to help others because doctors and nurses, that's what a lot of them do it for is so they can help others. Yes, ma'am. Is a pharmacist considered in like the healthcare? Absolutely, a pharmacist is a very important part of the healthcare world. Do you have any more questions? Yep. A scientist a part of the healthcare. Absolutely. Without new research, without new information, <laughs> we wouldn't know how. You know, think about some of the things that we have today versus 30 years ago. There's no way that it's not going to keep on advancing either because the scientists they do the research they do the stuff that makes you you know know what how to fix certain things a different way 35 40 years ago we didn't have robotics and now a lot of surgeries are done laparoscopically and with robots and that also helps with the scar so yeah there's always new advancements and always going to be a needed position Anybody else? Yeah, healthcare people have to be everywhere. There are certain prisons. Each prison will have a doctor and a nurse to take care of the inmates. Just like schools have school nurses, you have nurse practitioners that come around to each of your schools for you to be seen. You have dentists that come around to the schools. Same concept, just like that. Anything? And I'm with Shelter Insurance. Um, I have two little girls, um, one in fourth grade, Zoe Martin, that you may know, and then I have a sixth grader, Meredith Martin. And those are my babies, and I do insurance. So, um, the main type of insurance that I do is like car insurance and home insurance. So everybody puts in a little bit of money and if something happens, um, let's say you get into a car accident or you have home damage from a storm or something like that, the insurance company takes care of it. Has anybody ever been in a car accident before? My, my name is... Yeah, it, 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 it's, 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 yeah, it's mm -hmm. scary. Has anyone had damage to their home from recent storms, wind, or roof damage? Y'all have? Yeah, sometimes it happens. Sometimes people lose power. Um, if you can imagine, like, if a big tree fell on your house, 
It could damage your house, the stuff inside, and you may even have to live somewhere else while your house is getting repaired um, or built back. And insurance pays for all of that. So it helps take something unexpected that happens to you and makes it less of a stress on your family financially. So you don't have to pay as much money when something like that happens because you pay premiums in each month. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so when you're thinking about career day and you're thinking about insurance, um, when you think about questions to ask yourself when going into any field, I think education, right? Do you, what kind of education do you need? So I went to college, I studied finance. You don't have to go to college to be an insurance. You don't have to. Um, if you're gonna open your own agency, I would suggest that it would probably be a pretty good idea, but you absolutely don't have to. Um, another thing that you think about is work-life balance. Um, and so that's something that is really cool. So if my kids are sick, which have you, have you ever gotten sick before? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I get to stay home with them. So that is really cool. Or if I have career day, I could take off. And my kids play travel soccer. Um, so that's all we do is travel all over for soccer games. And um, I can close down the office and I can work on the soccer field. Now that brings me to the bad part about owning your own business. Um, how many of y'all have been on vacation? Lots of you? Yeah, yeah. Um, did your parents have to work it all on vacation, like answer your emails or bring your yes. computer? Some do, some don't, right? So I have to have my phone or computer wherever I go. So even though I can go to the soccer fields or I can take off, I am constantly getting phone calls and texts and all kinds of messages. Um, I've been on vacation with Anna Kate before and I had to work, huh? I always had that computer. It's important to be there. So even though you have the flexibility to be there for your kids, you also do have to be working all the time. Um, but the great thing about owning your own business is you can work as little or as much as you want and you can make as little or as much money as you want. The harder you work, the more money you make. Um, so I've worked for a State Farm office. Have y'all heard of State Farm? Yeah. What are some other insurance companies y'all heard of? Um, my dad has heard of this. Yeah, that's cool. The one that has like the green gecko. Yeah, Geico. The gecko Geico. That one's pretty cool. Anybody else think of any? And it pushes it. Yeah. It pushes it off of here into here. That way these don't have water in between them when you go through a puddle. It keeps you from sliding. That's really cool. Yeah. So then we have this tire over here, which is a bigger truck tire. But does anybody know what that type of tread is for? Mud? Ice? Not really ice. What? What was it? Yeah, those types that all that those big thick treads, what are they used for? Tractors. Tractors? No. Maybe like rocks. Rocks? Like if there has been a really heavy rain, it's kinda like Yeah, that would work. Gravel. Gravel. Off roading. Yeah. Yeah. A bumpy road, yep. So anything that is off the road, here's ma'am. What was here? A four wheeler, yep, so. Yeah. Yep, so like big trucks that are going off roading, Jeeps, Razors. There, a wheel goes in the middle of that time, and then it goes on a beetle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, so. But that keeps you from getting stuck in the mud and everything off the road, right? Because you're going to want to grip more than what you would just on the road. So then, if you look on the side of that tire, right, in, right under where it says wild, there's going to be a size. That size tells us how tall and how wide the tire is and also what size your wheel is. 
So when you order one, you have to know the size so we put the right size on your cart. But there's you see, And it goes flat. Most cars have a spare. So then you take that off and you put your spare on and then you go to a tire shop and have them get you a new tire. than just a tire like this. So a tire in the middle has bands, and those bands hold your tire together. So if you put a big, heavy truck on a tire like this, it's gonna bust those bands and it's not gonna work anymore. But that's why you need heavier bands. They're wider, they're thicker, and they're gonna hold more weight, yes. So if we, were, if we had a power pole in the backyard and we couldn't get a truck to it, Maybe the ground was too saturated because it was been raining, thunderstorming. We may have to climb a pole. He's gonna climb it. Quick, chanting, climb it. Oh my gosh, I killed it. Spider Man, what are you doing? He's gonna pole climb. Spider Man. The awful. Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Man. No, it can't. Because it's in a wheelchair. It's a new design where Don't you fall, you squeeze it, pull, and it won't let you fall. Look at him. Yeah. Wow. 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 Excuse me. How do you do that with such ease? It looks like a pencil with the points. I go into the wood. Spider-Man! Ice on his boots. Spider-Man! Do the wet thing. Do the wet thing. Do the wet thing. How do you get out? From uh, well, when you get older, my you can dog. Do it. Touch my hand. I'm falling. Yeah. I'm going to slide down. Yeah, 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 slide Alright guys, tell them thank you for those on his team. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a good day. Thank you. Look at that. Oh, look at that. 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 Look at Now we're just all like, we're just all the society's new introverts and we need time to recharge. <laughs> oh, okay, there's, I understand. There's still a gap in between each gap and you're saying that's tired. Oh, okay. Right, uh, my name is Jay. We're from Altec. Uh, we build what we call uh, the aerial devices or bucket trucks. As you all have just seen uh, the, where y'all came from, we actually build those trucks too. Not at our factory here in E-Town, but we do build them in our, uh, in our corporation. This is a truck that we built at Etown. We have built this truck from scratch. So basically what happens is it'll come in as a strip chassis. That means there's nothing on the bike. There's a body on it. We put the body on it. We build that complete unit from raw metal all the way up to what you see right here. Whoa. Do so, you put the danger stickers on it? Yeah, we put the danger sticker, stickers on. We gotta be safe. <laughs> this platform, this truck, what's cool about this truck is you can put an operator in the truck and it can drive with an operator in the back. 
that's why we got this platform. It's got these, uh, what we call, uh, uh, eyelets on the end so the cable can pull through it. So this truck will mainly do for, like, uh, internet and cable. Wendy is going to show you all what's in the platform, all the functions that are in the platform, show you what the control handle looks like, what the operator would, uh, how you'd function it, give you a little ins and outs on that. We got James over here. James is going to let you all, he's one of our employees at work. He works over, he, his group actually builds the unit. But what James is going to do is he's going to show you what we call our virtual unit. And this, that unit that's sitting over there, you can work the controls, you can see how it works moving up, down, side to side, all the functions. It has a platform on it. I tried to get in the platform, it doesn't work, so we're not gonna let y'all in the platform. It's just the same way with this platform. You can get in it, but we're not gonna raise it up, you know, safety and all that stuff. Even though it has the warning decals on it, still safety. Then we have um, Travis. Travis is gonna show you this. You see this little handle here? When we say that we build everything from scratch a lot of these parts come in they're all just flat steel so we have to bend it we have to weld it and he's going to show you the virtual welding of what welding actually does when you actually take two pieces of metal you form it together and then you basically kind of glue it but we're doing it with a weld so he's going to show you with this machine it's a virtual welder patty she's one of our uh, head trainers at work she says if anybody can get a hundred she'll give them a hundred dollars on the score <laughs> well, I see we got a welder back here, so yeah. I don't know if we want to do that with this group. See, she says she's going to give 100. I did not say that. <laughs> don't come to me. I have two kids. They suck me dry. But she says she'd take care of it for you. Um, so if you want to, if y'all got any questions for me, um, please. I don't know a whole lot. I'll try to answer it. But form a line. You can go over and work with James. He'll show you. You got a question? What's the question? What's the question? Big question. What you is the really, question? How does an engine work? Oh. <laughs> uh, oh. Uh, there's a video about that on Brain. I can get into it, but... <laughs> just, just Google it. Never mind. <laughs> Google it. Google it. YouTube it. YouTube it. You're good. Or ask Henry or Keegan. Okay. So, you can get in line over. James will show you the truck. You can get over here with the platform. Form a line. You can get in the platform. Uh, Wendy's will show you that. Or you can get in uh, Travis and show you how to do the uh, virtual one. I don't know. I don't know. Yes. Get in line and this all right. Is this the test? This is the little test, yes. So if we get a hundred on it, we get a hundred dollars. Uh, that's what she says. What if we do get a hundred? If you do get a hundred, then I guess you earn a hundred. And then you can say right? you want to do it? Right. So what we're going to do is there's a button on the bottom here, right? Where whenever we squeeze that button, we're going to hold it down the whole time. While we go from here all the way to the other. college and then you can give a lot of different medications and do a lot of different things to help people when they're really sick or they're really hurt so who wants to take a trip to the ambulance Please. Please. Okay. You ready? all right everybody go ahead and stand we're going to get in a single file line Ah, uh, no pushing and shoving. You two go ahead and go back. Thank you for being honest. Go ahead and sit back. Alright, we don't bully. So you go ahead and back. Why are you getting an angle? I mean, I know. I've been. I've been. I've been. I've been. We have to have patient permission or parent permission for that. Huh? You can touch it all you want, yes. You can check out how squishy it's not. Push all the buttons. What? All the seatbelts.
So guys, that's you all right now. Did you all know that for the last five years you've been role models? Because other eyes, smaller eyes, are watching every move you make. So think about that. And that's going to continue to go on. So make good decisions. Make good decisions. Make good choices. All right? Because other eyes are influenced by what you guys do. We're the same boat. We have other eyes watching us all the time. The community watches us. We've got a lot of kids that watch us. That want that want to, that want the role models. So if we do something really stupid, that might deter them from, you know, being a being a role model. So we don't want to do that. So you guys have got a lot of responsibility there. So I'm proud of you guys. You've done a great job for the last five years. You're moving on to middle school. So that's another stepping stone in the education. So uh, great job. I'm Chief Scott. I'm with the Valley Creek Fire Department. I'm also the EM Director for Hardin County uh, Emergency Services here in Hardin County. So we're going to talk a little bit today about what we do, what services we offer, and about the fire department. And I'll talk a little bit about what I do as an EM Director as well. So, all right. So real quick, let's talk about, are you their teacher? Yes. Are they a good team? Yes. Do you feel that way? Yes. Do y'all feel like you're a good team? Yes. yes. Yeah. A good teammate helps each other, right? Yes. Take a good look around this parking lot. I want you all look up this way and look that way. So, here's something really neat. These are all of my team right here, all these people. We all work together. It's so neat how uh, the, 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 the work field works, works out that way in life. We've got the electric company. We go on a structure fire, they're there to disconnect the power so we don't get electrocuted. We've got EMS besides. We get hurt, have a medical issue, they come in and take care of us. We've got health and fitness over here. They teach us different techniques how to keep our bikes from getting messed up as, as being firefighters. We've got the water district. What's the water district, mate? Water. Well, you need to put out fires. Water. Water. Y'all see where I'm going with that? All right. And we've got the road department. Snow and ice on the road. They are a vital resource for us to get to that fire. So being a good teammate, playing good together, working good together, that's where it all comes full circle when there's an emergency or any, any day in, the, in your career path. I promise you, work with others and be nice to people because you never know when you're going to need something from that person. So, all right, guys, to my left is Firefighter Nichols. He's going to talk about our truck, our apparatus. I've got Firefighter West over here, Firefighter Huckleby. They're going to kind of talk about, we're going to talk about what we wear. If you have a question at any point, by all means, just raise your hand and I'll answer. We'll answer them best we can. So, Firefighter Nichols, you take over. All right, guys, how are y'all doing this afternoon? Good, how are you? Awesome. This is our engine. It holds a thousand gallons of water. Does anybody know how much one gallon of water weighs? Um, 16 ounces. No. That's how much. Oh! Take a guess. Just 20. 20 less than that. No. No. Anybody else? Uh, 15. Oh, oh, wow. It's eight pounds. So one, one gallon of water is eight pounds. So this truck holds a thousand gallon of water. Eight thousand pounds. Eight thousand pounds is how much the just water, water. Just the water. water. That's not counting the truck, just the water. So so being an engineer on this truck, I need to know that because I need to know how the water is going to shift, if it's going to shift, what it's going to do to make sure I get this truck to where I'm going safely. Another thing, whenever I get in this truck, um, y'all y'all do math quite often in your class. I yes. When you get in this driver's seat of this truck, your brain's got to be on. you got to constantly be thinking, what do I need to do when I get there? Well, you, you look behind Chief Scott here, you see a yellow hose and a red hose. I've got to be thinking, how much how much pressure do I need on each one of these hoses? Who's in the truck with me? How far are we going to have to stretch this hose? How much friction loss am I going to have on this hose? Who can that, do quick math? Who's really quick at math? In the 
best way to be ready to buy a car is you get your theme song, your walkout song ready, so that once you get that new ride that you want, you're ready to put it in and go do your happy dance. But real quick, we're gonna get a couple moves together down. We're gonna show you this, give yourself a little bit of space, okay? Because car sales is just like leading somebody inside of a dance. You gotta show them step by step what to do. And it doesn't matter what you wear in clothes, you can wear a nice suit, nice shoes, or Jordans and a hat and a polo, and you can sell some cars. But really, you better make sure that you know how to groove. So real quick, we're gonna show some moves, right, Tony? And it's gonna go like this in five, six, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we move and we walk and we pose and we point and come back and be smooth and just groove and again say it one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight now walk it be cool be smooth be chill now go back and again and again now chill again one two three five six seven eight Walk it out, put that spin, put it out there, now show that grin. Now I'm back, and again, here we go, with your friends, say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, move, now smooth, now smooth, now easy, now right, keep coming this way, smooth, now for the chill. Now freeze. Now get that. Snap, 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 snap. Go, that. Other side, other side. Now just that head bob. All the way around. And back. And again, remember, you just got your ride. It don't, it don't matter what anybody thinks. I'm feeling my ride. Okay? Now close your eyes real quick and imagine that it did just show up inside of your driveway. Imagine you just woke up and it was there. What does that happy dance look like? I challenge each and every one of you to go home and ask your parents what does your happy dance look like if you bought your dream car, what would that happy dance look like? But I'm asking you now. Everybody say me. Turn to somebody and say, what's your happy dance look like? So we're going to find out real fast what your happy dance looks like. What's your happy dance look like? Ready? On three. Close your eyes. We're just going to let it out. On three. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. Three. Get it. Uh, 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 uh. Get it.